How's it going? Oh, oh wait, I forgot. The following video will have content that may only be meant for people under the over the age of 13. Anybody under the age of 13 must watch this content with a parent. And if your parents allow you to see the content of this video, then your parents are totally awesome. How's it going, old schoolers? You are kicking it old school, and I'm your host, Dr. Old School. I was going to go ahead and make a video for you this week. I was Actually, I was going to make two videos for you. But unfortunately, <clears throat> it is now Sunday, March 15th, 2020. And unfortunately, we all got spooked by the coronavirus that has been plaguing. You know, coming from overseas and people coming and bringing it. And I was going to do one video was going to be about campy movies, which is going to be the topic of this video. And then later on, I'll let you know what else was going on. Actually, I just got my car back from the body shop when I got rear-ended on my way into work last Friday. <clears throat> I went through all kinds of heck to get it, you know, just to get it back. Was in, I was driving in a rental car for about a couple days, but lo and behold, I got it back, and everything's good, everything's kosher. Tonight, I want to go ahead, and I want to discuss, you know, campy movies. Everybody remembers the Batman TV show of the 1960s, you know, when they had the choreographed fights with the pow and the oof and the uh, you know, where they made it look like a live-action comic book. And there was Lost in Space... And you can remember how cheesy and corny the special effects were. And they even had a Wonder Woman television show, a Hulk television show, and Spider-Man television show, which was extremely campy. And KISS had their own feature film in 1978 on TV called KISS Meets the Phantom of the Park, which was really, really campy. But I'm going to touch base on some of my favorite campy movies. Some of them are movies of my own, others I got out of my local public library. And if if this video gets out of sync with me talking, it's because my tablet is acting a little bipolar and so is my phone. Without further ado, let's check these bad Oscars out, shall we? First movie on the agenda that I want to go through in this pile. Batman the Movie from the TV show starring Adam West and Burt Ward. This is the Holy Special Edition, Batman Special Edition. This, you know, has, it came right from the TV show, the popularity of the TV show. And, you know, it has all the stars from the TV show in it and all the choreographed fight scenes with the pow and the oof. And what happened was, you know, they decided, why don't we make a feature film for the theater? And this one has the trailer and the teaser trailer even has a, a documentary on the Batmobile hosted by George Barris himself or should I say the late great George Barris who also con who also customized other really cool rides to the stars like Sonny and Cher's twin Mustangs uh <clears throat> the Batmobile Clark Griswold's family truckster kit you know all kinds of cool stuff he did if you ever want to, if you want some real good fun, check this, check this bad Oscar out. It is worth the while. And the next one I have here is Flash Gordon starring Sam Jones. Sam Jones did not exactly become, would not become a household name until 30 some years later when he appeared on both Ted movies where he played a fictionalized version of himself bragging about his Flash Gordon movie. Now, this was as cheesy as it gets. I mean, I come to find out a little bit of nostalgia on this one. I come to find out George Lucas wanted to do a Flash Gordon-style movie like the old movie serials, which would become Star Wars. He just couldn't obtain the rights to Flash Gordon, so what he did was... He went ahead and made it his own by making his own original, which is Star Wars, what we know today. This movie came out around the same time as The Empire Strikes Back. 
funny thing was, uh, one of the studios that actually turned down Star Wars Universal went and picked this up, and they made the movie. You can, I bet you anything, they'd kick themselves now. Thank you, 20th Century Fox, for giving us Star Wars. And then the next one here, I've got Masters of the Universe, the motion picture, starring Dolph Lundgren as He-Man and Frank Langella as Skeletor. Even has Courtney Cox in her big feature film debut. At this time, Courtney Cox was known as the girl from Bruce Springsteen's Dancing in the Dark video. And I think she was on a show called Misfits of Science that was short-lived, because I remember I used to watch that show, and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, it was canceled. Don't know why, but it was. Now this, what I wish they would have done, considering the Masters of the Universe toy line was kind of fizzling out from popularity due to other stuff like the real Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Centurions, and Inhumanoids, and Brave Star, to name a few. I would have, you know, they thought that just a live action, a full length feature live action movie starring the guy who killed Apollo Creed would, you know, would revitalize the toy line. Unfortunately, the toy line did end up losing popularity throughout the late 1980s. I had all the He-Man toys as a kid. And they dubbed this movie as the Star Wars of the 80s. It had decent special effects. But one of the things I wish they would have done was had an origin story. You know, have Prince Adam and how He-Man came to be and how he started fighting Skeletor instead of a continuation of the story. Because we never really got a whole origin story on He-Man. And then the next one that I have is one of my favorites of the 80s. Say it once, say it twice, third time's a charm. Beetlejuice, starring Michael Keaton. This was Tim Burton's second big success since Pee-wee's Big Adventure. And at the time, Ghostbusters had come out. I always like to think of this movie as the Exorcist and Ghostbusters meets Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Because it did have, like, you know, paranormal studies, like in Ghostbusters, and had possessions and everything, like The Exorcist. But it was funny, it was zany, it was campy. I mean, special effects were so bad that it was great. It became a big hit. And I'm proud to say, one of my favorite movies of the 1980s. Next up, we have Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, starring Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, and George Carlin. Now, everybody knows this classic. I mean, it would be cool to go travel in time in a phone booth like Doctor Who and pick up historical characters to pass a history report. <clears throat> I mean, you had you had some big names in music that appeared in this. You had Clarence Clemens of the Bruce Springsteen E Street Band as one of the three most important people. If you remember, he's the black guy that goes party on dude to Rufus, a.k.a. George Carlin. And Jane Weedlin of the Go-Go's played Joan of Arc. And I forgot who the other rock star cameos in this as well. But... Fun movie, very campy. Again, special effects that aren't so great, but makes the movie great anyway and makes it fun. I air guitar every time to it. It also did have a sequel. <clears throat> if Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. And in this one, it, Bill and Ted had passed history, graduated high school, got engaged to their medieval princess girlfriends, and we're getting ready to be part of a battle of bands until until an evil villain from the future named Chuck Denomalos goes ahead and dispatches two robot replicas of them to you know kill Bill and Ted and during their journey they go through the afterlife through heaven hell and purgatory with the help of the grim reaper to help them get their lives back together in a way again i see a reference to the seventh seal Terminator 2, and Doctor Who. But I actually found this one to be better than the first one. I thought the special effects were better, and the jokes were even funnier. As a matter of fact, supposedly this summer we're supposed to get Bill and Ted face the music. 
I'm looking forward to that with Ghostbusters Afterlife and Fast and Furious 9. Next on this list of treasures, of campy treasures, is Dick Tracy, directed and starring Warren Beatty as the title character. What I could say about this is, well, I think what it was, was in the summer of 1990 when they were getting out the blockbusters, this was supposed to be the big blockbuster of the summer of 1990, and I remember, just like Batman the year before, I mean, it flooded, the market flooded with all kinds of Dick Tracy merchandise. I mean, I went to Disney World with my mother that summer, and she bought me a Dick Tracy t-shirt. And they had rubber figurines, they had all kinds of Dick Tracy merch to boot. But this movie didn't really do well, and it's a crying shame because it had an all-star cast of Warren Beatty, Al Pacino, Dick Van Dyke, James Tolkien, as you know, as Principal Strickland from Back to the Future. Um, an awesome score by Danny Elfman, who did the score for Batman and Batman Returns, and Beetlejuice, and a lot of other movie scores. I mean... I thought it was pretty decent, and they kind of made it like a live-action comic book. But it didn't really do well, but I enjoyed it. Next on the list is Super Mario Brothers, starring Bob Hoskins as Mario and John Leguizamo as Luigi, Samantha Mathis as Princess Daisy, and Dennis Hopper as King Koopa. And this was supposed to be the big hit for the summer of 1993, it was going to compete with Last Action Hero starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, and then what happened was Jurassic Park just blew everybody away with the summer blockbusters of 1993. Now, this movie, not a lot of people liked it because it didn't look, I mean, just like Masters of the Universe, it didn't look like the characters from the Super Mario Brothers game, which was a popular video game for the Nintendo Entertainment System back in the 1980s. But it was enjoyable. I liked the whole Blade Runner-ish, you know, set pieces and everything. And Dennis Hopper does make a good villain. Although, Bob Hoskins never cared for being Mario. He, I mean, one of the things I heard was the directors were, you know, they were nasty to cast members. And John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins were slurping, you know, scotch in between takes. I mean, it was almost like he took Eddie Valiant and had him be Mario. You know, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit and then have him be Mario. But, you know, it was, to me, it was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. It was the first video game-based live-action movie. And, you know, you'd have other popular video games like Double Dragon and Street Fighter come out and they would tank. But then, more then years later, you got Mortal Kombat and you got Resident Evil and... Other video games I really don't know about, but this one I highly recommend. If you don't remember it, you know, look for this one. It is a fun, campy movie. Last but certainly not least, it's another Batman movie, but a lot of people overlooked this movie after Tim Burton decided to leave you know, just only become a producer, and Joel, Joel Schumacher took the helm of being the director. Keaton decided he didn't, he didn't want to star as Batman anymore. So, they had to go, the search was on for a new Batman. And look no further, I thought this movie was pretty good. Batman Forever, and again, another one that had an all-star cast. It had, you know, Val Kilmer playing Batman. I was excited about that, because... Val Kilmer is one of my favorite actors. I mean, he was I mean, he was awesome as Jim Morrison in The Doors as I said in another video. And, you know, he was the Iceman in Top Gun and, you know, I mean, his credits, you know, like Willow. I mean, everything. Val Kilmer is just a downright awesome actor. You know, and he's the best leading man. Jim Carrey is the Riddler, where Robin Williams was going to take on the role, but they didn't want Robin Williams, and they rejected Robin Williams back in the 80s for the role of the Joker as well. But you know what? Sure, this movie looked like Batman the Animated Series, the live-action movie. 
because they did the whole period thing where they had all kinds of cars from different times and people dressed in 40s when it took place in 1995, just like Batman the Animated Series does. But it was a fun movie. I saw it at the theater and I enjoyed it. And, you know, I don't know. And it had a really good soundtrack album to it. So anyway, that is, <clears throat> that's basically my favorite campy type movies. If you have a fav, if you have a favorite group, leave, you know, oh yeah, I forgot. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Tell me about what your favorite camp, campy style movies were. You know, if I missed anything. But, you know, if you're wondering why I'm kind of like, uh, kind of sluggish a bit, it's because, well, like I said, you know, the car accident, and I had to go through all this trouble with the body shop to get my car. And, you know, this coronavirus, it was stressing my mom out because my dad was, you know, on a trip with one of his friends out on a cruise that he had won. And... My mother wasn't sure of whether or not, you know, he was going to come back because maybe they were going to quarantine the ship. But lo and behold, today he did come back home. And he's fine. Everybody on the ship was fine, thank goodness. And I want to go ahead and just, you know, just talk about the issue. This is where Dr. Old School cares. I was looking through my videos, and I was looking at all the views that all my videos have. I mean, I binge-watched all my videos, and it's amazing how much I've changed in nearly three years. You know, I, I think I might have lost a little bit of weight since the first video, and, well, I started coloring my hair, and I grew it out a little bit, and, you know, eh, you know, things in general. I just go through life, and, you know, like... I thought to myself, I gotta make another video. I always want to make videos for you guys. You know, now I've got 32 subscribers. And, you know, 32 subscribers to me is better than no subscribers. And I'm very thankful to all of you for it. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, there's people who care, who enjoy what I do. And I hope to get more subscribers and more subscribers. You know, just, you know, go on and tell your friends about me. I'm, you know, like I said, I am going to find some more material. I'm looking to get out of the laboratory. And all this coronavirus, too. I also want all of you to take care of yourselves and your families. We're going to get through this and we'll get back to our normal lives. And I'll have another video waiting for you. Till then, this is Dr. Old School wishing you Godspeed. And I'm not kidding when I say take care of your families and you, doctor's orders. And may the force be with all of you, always.